much every program manipulates and manages data of some sort. It could be as simple as just two numbers that are being added together, or it could be a vast amount of data in terms of millions of records, maybe for a customer database. Data in programming is placed into containers, and those containers reside in our random access memory. They're usually not visible, though there are visible containers in GUI programming. Typically, every language, though, has a variety of containers for various needs, and these are common containers across most languages. Uh, pretty much every programming class begins working with variables, and a variable is simply a place in memory that contains a value of a certain data type. And the type of data that we'll talk about are things like integers, decimal values, strings, Boolean values, maybe a date time variable. And the types of data types that we have in languages varies from a little bit, but those are all pretty common. Variables are thus named because the value they contain can change. It's sort of like going and buying a toaster and you take the toaster out of the box it came in and then you put something else in that box. You can think of variables just as a box in memory. And the type of data that we store in that box determines how large that box needs to be. So in most languages, we declare variables of a certain data type to determine how much memory we should put aside to hold that variable. Python is unique in that we don't have to type our variables it will do that for us automatically and it will change the size of the box we need based on the value we're trying to store in that variable. So variables are dynamic in Python where most other languages they are static as far as their size. Now we might have a variable that never changes and we never want it to change such as the value of pi. We usually refer to that as a constant. In most languages we can declare constants and uh, that value never changes. And then we have collections that contain larger amounts of data. A variable only contains one piece of information, as does a constant. But collections can contain multiple pieces of information, multiple amounts of data. The most common of which is arrays. It's kind of where we usually start students with, is developing with arrays. But then we have more generic type uh, containers such as list tuples which can contain multiple values of different data types or the same data type and are treated like a variable. Dictionaries which allow us to pair a key and a value just like in a regular dictionary we'd have a term and a definition. We have stacks and queues which are lists and they differ in that stacks are last in first out so like a cafeteria tray. The last one put into the stack is the first one we take off the stack. Queues are kind of opposite of that. It's first in, first out. So we refer to these as LIFO and FIFO. A queue, whatever goes in first, is the first one out of that list when we extract something from it, such as we might have a queue for printing. The first document in the printing queue is the first one the printer prints. And then we have hash tables. And there are others. Um, in C Sharp, we have array list, and we have sorted list, and we have linked list. But these are the main ones that you're going to come across in most languages. Now, we've talked about Python being easier to learn than most other languages, and it's simpler. And so in Python, we don't have all of these. We have variables, and we have some collections, mostly list, tuples, and dictionaries. There are no constants in Python. You can create a variable and treat it as a constant, just don't change its value. And what a lot of programmers do for constants is when they name those, they put the name in all uppercase as a visual clue that it's a constant. Arrays really can be accomplished with list, as stacks and queues can as well. And hash tables can be, be tied to a type of dictionary. So we're going to work with the list, tuples, and dictionaries much later, but for now we're going to talk about variables. And variables become the building block of our data containers. Data types are simply the type of data that a variable holds. And we refer to data types because we want to make our data storage as concise and effective as it can be. And so languages have various data types for different types of data. Python actually only has a handful compared to other languages. There are really four data types that we're going to focus in. And the first one is integers. And we use a keyword of int, lowercase int, to refer to an integer data type. Integers are whole numbers, numbers without a decimal. So numbers like 12, 3,000, 
246 are integers. They can be negative as well. You might have a negative 5. But these are whole numbers. In other languages, we have very various categories of whole numbers that specify a particular range, both low and high end, that a number can fall in in that data type. So if it's just a small number in C sharp, we might use something like a byte data type. It goes from 0 to 255. A little bit larger than that, we might use short, which is a plus or minus roughly 32,000. An integer in C sharp is a plus or minus a little over 2 billion. And then for really large numbers, we have what's called a long data type, which holds a much larger value, but also takes a lot more storage for that number. Now in Python, an integer can basically be within any range. Python doesn't care how large an integer is, as long as there's memory to store it. Numbers that hold a decimal are referred to as floating point numbers. And the key word in Python is float. Floating point numbers can be both positive and negative, but they have a decimal point. And when you're dividing two numbers, there are both integer division and regular division. So an integer division ends up with a result that is an integer, where the, the decimal is truncated. Dividing 7 by 3 as an integer division gives us 2, but dividing 7 by 3 as a floating point gives us 2.3333. So data types also come into play in terms of mathematical calculations. Now, in other languages, there are also a number of floating points, again, based on range. And so in languages like Java and C Sharp, you might have things like double or float or single or decimal. Our third category of data types in Python is strings. And strings occur in every language. Strings are alphanumeric text. Strings are what we were printing in our previous lesson. So with the print statement, what's being printed is a string value. The key word here in Python is str. Strings may be numbers, but those numbers are represented inside of quotes that make them a string rather than an integer or a floating point number. And our fourth data type is a Boolean variable or Boolean value. Boolean values are either true or false. And in Python, we capitalize the true and we capitalize the false when we assign values to a Boolean variable. Let's look at how we declare and assign variables and use them in Python. I've opened up the Python idle editor and created a new file called 01 underscore variables dot py. And we use this file to demonstrate how variables are declared, um, how we can assign values to variables, and then also um, reiterate the different types of variables here. So the way we assign a value to a variable is we have a variable name, or what's referred to as an identifier, equals some value. And that value would be, again, a data type. It could be an integer, it could be a floating point, it could be a string, it could be a Boolean value. The variable names must adhere to a few rules. And one of those rules is it must start with a letter or an underscore. You cannot start a variable with a number. But it may include numbers, letters, or underscores. No other special characters. No hyphens, no dollar signs, no spaces. Only letters, numbers, and underscores. And they are case sensitive. So a variable named ABC, all lowercase, is not the same as ABC with a capital B or all uppercase ABC. Those are three different variables. Now, while there are three different variables, I would caution you about using the same variable name with different case sensitivity because it will get confusing. Stick to different names for each variable. And you may not use keywords. We've seen a few keywords already, such as print. We've talked about a few keywords for variables being int, float, str for string, or bool for boolean. So here's some names that are invalid. 1, 2, 3, A, B, C. Think about why it's invalid. It's invalid because it starts with a number. My dash campus. I can't use a hyphen or a dash. I can use an underscore. I could say my underscore campus. And I can't use float as a variable name because that's a key word. I recommend as much as possible using meaningful names. Pay rate is a much better variable name than PRT. Now there'll be times you're going to see me use single letters uh, for counters or for very simple problems. A, B, C, I, X, Y, Z. You'll see me use those a lot for very short programs 
or where I have a block of code and I just want to keep track of a variable during while that block is running. If I want variable names for data that's going to be used elsewhere in the program, it's probably a good idea to make it something meaningful. You must declare a value when you initially declare the variable. I'm going to change that to say you must assign a value when initially declared. We're declaring a variable and we're assigning a value. Now the little equal sign is what we call the assignment operator. So it's always again the variable name, the assignment operator, and the value being assigned into that variable name, into that box in memory. And we can use underscores or camel casing to separate words and make our variables more readable. So what is camel casing? Well, here's a variable I have number of students. Notice that I capitalize the O and the S. That is camel casing. I think if you're reading along lowercase and also even uppercase, you kind of go over that. That creates the hump of the camel. I have another hump here for students. Typically, we don't capitalize the first letter. It's just the first letter of subsequent words. Here for hours worked, I could have wrote this as hours capital W worked, but here I used an underscore. It's a matter of personal preference. You'll see most Python programmers probably use underscores. I tend to use camel casing because of carryover from other languages that I program in. So here's where we're declaring a variable named campus. We're assigning equals a literal string of South Mountain. And that literal string needs to be in quotes. If it's not in quotes, we'd get an error. Because if it's not in quotes, the Python editor will try to figure out what south is and what mountain is. And by putting this in quotes, we're basically telling the editor, don't worry about what this is. Just assign it to campus. Number of students is being assigned 4285. That's a whole number. That is an integer data type. Married equals true. Notice the capital T. This is a Boolean data type. It's either true or false. And then hours worked equals 43.75. That, of course, is a floating data type. Variable values can be printed, um, and non-strings are automatically converted to strings. So here I can print campus. I can print number of students. I can print married. I can print hours worked. And we're going to run this in a minute so you see that. I can also assign a value to multiple variables at once by simply using a, a chain of assignment operators. A equals B equals C equals D equals five. Now the five has to come last. The value is always on the furthest right. But I can print each of those values separately, A, B, C, D, and we should see five, five, five being printed out. And then finally, I can assign a numeric expression to a variable. So here I have E equals A plus B plus 3. Now A is going to be 5, B is going to be 5 because of this line up here, and E should be 13. I'm going to print E. I've saved my program. Control S. I'm going to do F5 to run. And here then is my program running. So we get South Mountain where I'm printing campus. We get the number of students, 4285 from the print number of students. Print married gives us true, and print hours worked gives us the 43.75. The print ABCD gives us 555, and then the print E is the calculation of 5 plus 5 plus 3, which is 13. I'm going to go back over to my code. I'm going to add a print statement, and we're just going to print a hyphen here times 20. And then we're going to do a calculation. So I want to know what the circumference is of a circle. Now remember the circumference of a circle, let's put a little comment here. Circle circumference is the diameter times pi. So let's do this with some variables. I'm going to have a circle whose diameter equals we'll say 20. And then I'm going to use a constant of pi. I'm going to do that in all uppercase. Pi equals 3.1416. And so my circumference then is the diameter times, and we use an asterisk, shift 8 for the multiplication symbol, 
times pi. And I want to print then the circumference. So I'm going to run this. Do a control S to save, F5 to run. And so here I'm getting everything we had printed before again, but here's our 20 dashes and then the circumference of our circle being 62.832. Now let's make that a little bit easier to read. Let's do a print statement here of the circumference is, and remember we had that end equals quote quote, so it doesn't do a new line character. So now we'll have the circumference is, and then the circumference. So again, I'm going to run this. I want to save it. And I misspelled print here. Let me fix that. Do a control S for save, F5 for run. And so now my printout is the circumference is 62.832. We're going to talk about concatenating data in a print statement uh, a few videos from now where we can actually do this all in one line. I want to make this a little bit fancier and I'm going to do what we know so far about print statements. So I'm going to say the circumference of and make sure I have a space after of. Again, I'll do the end equals quote quote. And we'll do another print statement here. This is going to be the diameter and again I'm going to use an end equals quote quote and here we'll say circle which is to I'm sorry of a 20 unit diameter circle is. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to run it. And now we're getting more of a sentence output here of the circumference of 20 unit diameter circle is 62.832. I probably should put a little uh in here, the circumference of A. So I can maybe add an, an A there. And that'll print out even better. So here's how we can use multiple print statements to print a sentence that's comprised of different things. As I said, we can do this with, with um, a couple different ways using concatenation or using placeholders. And we'll do that in a future video. So you've seen how to create a variable, assign it a value, and print that value. Remember the value assigned can be a literal value, such as 4285. It can be a mathematical value, and we'll see later it can be things like the return value of a function. I want to do one more thing in our code, and that is we talked about variables are named that because the value that they contain can change. So I'm going to reassign the value of A to be 7, and then the value of B, let's make it say 9, and then I'm going to do that same statement we did before of E equals A plus B plus three, and then we'll print E again. So by changing the value of A and B and then reassigning that value to E, those three variables are all changing. Let's just run this. And so we can see here's our original E of 13, five plus five plus three. And then we did our circumference of the circle. And then this last bit is seven plus nine is A plus B. That's 16 plus three is 19. And that's the value of E that is printed out. It's very common that we are going to create a variable, assign it a value, and then change that value as the program runs.